Yo, 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 what's going on, good people? It's your boy, Three Stacks in this thing, baby, representing Team Kings of Games. And today, you guys, I'm coming at you with an update for Necros uh, due to popular and a high volume in demand. Like, the requests are crazy. Um, these are the decks that get always get what's known as priority in my um, in my process, you know, and, and how, I product, uh, how I do my content production. Whatever gets the most requests has to go first. The ones that get, like, one, if that one person's asking for it, it kind of, like, has to be put... In the back burner, you know, like right behind the one that has like 30 people asking for it. Because that's like a high volume in demand. You know, when you got that many people that want to see a deck, you got to get that one first. So we got an update for Necroids, you guys. Um, I did move my Pots of Extravagances. So I basically swapped them out for something else. So this also was something I was experimenting with and it works out. So you guys also get to see another way where you can basically have a supplement for um, Pot of Extravagance. And it actually works. So you guys are seeing when we get there. It's a little kooky, but it works out really well. And the deck needs that draw power. So let's go ahead and start off with the Necro lineup. So we play uh, three copies of Brionic. Uh, I think Brionic's effect on fields better than his effect um, to search. Because there's so much generic ritual support now that can search all the cards that he would normally search. His effect on fields is just way better now. Like, you hardly need it for that instance, but when it comes up, it comes up. Um, I also do not have um, Vanity's Ruler. So I do not have Benton and Vanity's Rulers in my deck. Because I don't have any of these rulers. I'm trying to find one. I really want one. But I also want to do a going second build. And then like either make my main deck for going first. Or going second. And then side deck the other build. So let's say this was a going second build. Then I would side the vanities, uh, the vanities ruler. But if this was a going first build. I would main it. But either way. Vanities and Benton has to be somewhere. Because the Necro's arsenal is ridiculously high ceiling. Just with implementing that alone. That already just allows the deck to be played a lot more viably it just becomes a lot more viable on the competitive format a lot of people just don't have an out of vanities so yeah if you guys are going to ask where that is it, uh, i just don't have it yet but we're going to get the vanities rule eventually next up i played three copies of klaus um so klaus is one of those cards that most people would play at two and um some people say oh you know it co it clogs at three you know it's hard once per turn but it's like it's the same thing like trying to say don't play three brio you know it's it's your searcher the ritual spells are just as important as the ritual monsters so do not think that Clausulus is inferior or in in the matter of um impactful importance that he's less important than brio they're equal in importance so you need to see both of them that's why i played three of them also going second really helps to have that hard drawn drawn for turn spot removal for that colossus so that we can actually search you need to hard draw these for your worst matchup danger thunder or just thunder dragons in general um so colossus is really good and also the final thing is this is the best card to have with any any incantation in your hand is live so you you have the ones that require a ritual monster keep them in your hand reveal it if they require a ritual spell discard him and search so he unbricks your incantation hands so he's just way too good um i also play uh two copies of valk uh, so Valk is definitely not needed at 3 anymore um, because the Imps can actually loop him from Grave. So you can use Pencil Plume to get him back from Grave whenever the third one would come up. And uh, just recycle ability. Uh, you just really need to maintain your resources correctly. Um, so holding Valks is important. Sometimes you just don't want to use your Valk right away. If it's not an OTK, then don't end the battle phase. You only want to use Valk if they're going to kill you or if they're trying to kill your Unicorn. But if it's not that instance and they're just trying to get a little damage push, sometimes it's smarter to hold your Valk. Um, you just really need it. So it's a card that you got to be patient with. And of course, it gets maximum value if you have two extra incantations on your field that you can just get rid of. Um, Valkyrus essentially becomes Pot of Greed on Legs. So it's a good card and 1900 attack. I mean, 2900 attack is really important. Um, and then I do play two Trish. I think that this is correct. I know back in the day um, when Necro's format was like, actually, like back in Necro's format, and when Necros were like a $700 deck practically, uh, Trishula was like a main deck one of, and most people thought it was incorrect to play two, but in today's metagame, it is absolutely correct to play two. In fact, some would argue to say that it's incorrect to play one. Um, I also play one copy of Gungunir. Although she is not the best Necros monster in the deck, I think that it's a card that you should consider never ever cutting in your deck, because this card will always come up, and the reason why it will always come up is because there are cards that Necros can just not get rid of without her. Like, they cannot interact with back row. Like, this deck's interactions are with special summon monsters a majority of the time. Monsters from the extra deck. And Trish can interact with back row sometimes, but it's like, Trish is a really big play. That's a really, really big play. And when you're using a really big play just to clear a Floodgate, sometimes the Floodgate won't let you. Um, so Gunganir just having that, it really helps to clear those floodgates, those boss monsters that are in your way. And also having an interruption on your first turn that can interact with um, control decks. Like, for example, if you're playing Guru Control, 
Gunganir is a god card against that deck. Like, if you're playing stun decks like that, like Guru Control, for example, or they normal summon in the Spectre Border, like, Gunganir is, like, a heaven sent, like, literally, like, one of the best cards in those matchups. If you're not playing, like, a, a control deck and you're playing, like, a heavy combo deck, obviously, Unicorn and, like, you know, Colossalis and other cards like that are better, but you should never not play Gunganir. She's so good. And discarding her to keep your guys from being destroyed by, um, from card effects and then pitching a Trish to protect it from targeting, that's, like, the ultimate protection. It's, like, Chaos Mask Protection. Um, I do play one copy of Cataster. This is another one of my non-conventional non one-ups. Um, I've always played Cataster. I've loved him literally in Necros. Like, I can't play him without... I, I just can't play Necros without him. Like, there's just too many wins that he steals. There's too many duels that he just kind of like... You're not supposed to win that duel, but because you play Cataster, you won. Like, your opponent just had all these monsters that just had stupid effects that you couldn't really stop and you couldn't negate them. And if you didn't negate them, they would just negate your card and kill it. Where you're just like, all right... Well, Catastro says if all my guys attack your special summon monsters from the extra deck, they're automatically destroyed. He turns every monster that's the Necros into ally of just uh, justice Catastro, but for special summon monsters. So you're killing those monsters just by attacking them. You're not activating your Necros effects. You're just attacking. So this is how you can just get rid of all those pesky monsters. Like if you had Jackal King, Jackal King, Jackal King, you just ritual summon for Catastro, summon out your Necro guys, and swing and just destroy them. It, this card just breaks boards, and its discard effect is really insane in tandem with Shirit, Dance Princess, and the Great Sorcerer. So there's no reason to not play this card. If you don't play it, it doesn't really mean that Necros are going to suck without it, but it's just so, so good. Like, this card is absolutely worth it. And then one Unicorn. It's kind of, you know, it's at one for a reason. When we get three, though, Necros definitely get a huge boost, and I can see them jumping up to Tier 2 automatically. Um, continuing with the Necros, um, so these are the Necros blue cards. Uh, we also play four main deck Necros monsters in the form of two Shirits, one Dance Princess, and one of my favorites, Great Sorcerer of the Necros. I really enjoy Great Sorcerer a lot. Um, it's not just his tributed effect, which is actually really insane when you guys think of it. I mean, you got this guy can only search warriors. And don't get me wrong, Brio can search anything, but when you use Brio for him, you can't use Brio again. So just the fact that he can search your Valkyries, that's a spellcaster. Search your Gunganir, that's a spellcaster. Search your Necros of Unicorn, that's a spellcaster. That's something Shirt can't do. Shirt adds a Necros what? A Necros warrior. So it, can, it can't search those things. So I like having the flexibility. And also his other effect is insane. Um, Dance Princess is also ridiculously good going second. I'm um, like, oh my gosh, like just, if you can search, like if you're not playing Danger Thunder and they, they're not preventing you from searching and you have a way to search this out and just normally, you can Ritual Summon for free. And you can like activate a Ritual Spell, Summon a Trish, Tributing Shirt for cost and be like, uh, Trish will chaining one, Shirt chaining two and bypass negations and chain block and break boards that way. So these cards are really good. You definitely want to consider Great Sorcerer. When he comes up, he comes up. And um, I got to read you guys' Banish effect because this is actually bonkers. Okay, so if this card's Banished, send one Necro monster from your deck to your hand. That doesn't sound good at all. Send one Necro monster from your deck to your hand. It's actually insane. Trust me, bro. We'll get there when we get there. But it has really good... Um, it goes in tandem with Cycle Plays and also with your Mirrors because certain Necros get other effects. Like, you can send Dance Princess, for example, and then Dance Princess. If we read Dance Princess, uh, this card's effect, if it's tributed, right, you can target one of your Banished Necros monsters and you basically get to add it to your hand. So essentially, like, these cards are like little filter engines. So it's like, these make the Necros deck more consistent, even though they're not Ritual Monsters. And there's also really cool utility plays that they make, so I like them a lot. And you're primarily using him to send a target for Cycle, and if not, you send a good target that could be banished, so that you can make your Mirror plays that way. So really good cards. Uh, next up, the Incantations. I play 3 Child Slime. Um, every ritual deck is playing, every ritual deck that is ritual dominant is playing 3 Child Slime. All of mine. Like, my Heralds are playing 3 Child Slime. This card's good. In fact, this card's broken. It's really insane. Uh, we play 3 copies of Pencil Plume. Also, Spot Removal. Destroying monsters. That helps with Necros. They need those Spot Removals. Uh, 3 Pencil Plume. Pencil Plume and also book, Bookstone are the incantations that I prefer to draw. So they're the ones that I play at 3. Because these are never brick. These are always live in your hand. I've never had an issue. When you draw multiples, it's okay. You can sacrifice them for Valk or their Ritual Summoning Fodder. Because their levels are, are different, the combination of them can still be the exact equal level for a Necros Ritual Monster. Like, for example, a Talus Mandra plus a Pencil Plume, that still summons Trish because 6 plus 3 is 9. And then the other uh, incantations I play at 2. You can play 2 of each. But playing three of each actually made my deck a lot more consistent, and I have never had any issues with them. Like, I, I really enjoy them a lot. And also, we need darks. I'll show you.
So for the normal sons of the deck, we have three copies of Manju and three copies of Mega Zayborg. You don't have to play Zayborg. It's personal preference. But I play them, and no one's going to tell me not to because you tell me, I'm still going to play them. Zayborg is way too high ceiling. It's a win condition by itself. Some decks just... It's not even just resolving the effect to, like, dump your hell to arc life. It's not the four to five searches that you get off of it. Uh, it's actually just wrecking your opponent's extra deck. Some decks just lose automatically by that. Like, remember Lathosa Gym? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Zayborg's pretty good, you guys. And uh, the Manju, some could say, oh, you don't want to play six normal summons. Necros were playing three Manjus and three Sinjus. They're the only normal summons of the deck. Dude, literally. Like, you have to open one of the six. If you don't open any of them, it just sucks because the normal summons, like, really do accomplish a lot. Uh, for the spells, we play three copies of Extra Foolish Burial. Essentially, this is like a Child Slime or it's just... Yeah, it's like a Child Slime. It just It's like resolving him, basically. You add a ritual spell or a ritual monster from your deck to your hand. Generic ritual monster. So it just it searches any ritual monster or any ritual spell in the game. So it's basically three extra combo pieces. You pay half your life once, but it adds a surplus to the layer of consistency that the deck has. So any Necros deck can... You can be playing 40-card Necros and add three more of this into your deck and make it a 43-card deck, and it'll still make it more consistent. By sacrificing and not playing this in a ritual deck, that's three extra combo pieces that you're not playing. It doesn't make sense to not play it. We have three copies of uh, Preparation of Rites. This card is just like Extra Forge Barrel because you can just search Child Slime. Child Slime can get any imp. Imps can search anything. Uh, and then I play Lord Darkness. This is my supplement for um, the Pot of Extravagances that I don't have. But these are not proxies. They're actually Lords. I play Lords in this deck because I can frequently search out my darks and i mean consistently search out my darks to the point where you can actually play three allures like it, you don't have a problem with it like you have to test it first before you actually put it in your main deck but trust me on the allures man it's a good it's a good supplement for the the extravagance if it if it could be extravagance i would change it out for extravagance because extravagance is a plus one and allure darkness is not but nonetheless the deck needs some kind of draw power like, searching's fine, but when you're playing against Danger Thunder, you need to draw. Because if you can't search your combo pieces, drawing's the only other way that you'll get to them. Uh, and then we play one copy of Rhoda to pretty much uh, finish out the uh, the filter cards. So these 10 cards are just going to be um, thinning your deck out to get to your combo pieces. The rest are the ritual spells. We play two Kaleido, my favorite, net uh, my favorite Necros ritual spell. We play two copies of Mirror and two copies of Cycle and one Inception. Inception is the best one. Because it could summon anything that you want it to, and also its graveyard effect is really tits. It's pretty good, you guys. Um, sometimes you're doing cute plays where you're um just filtering through your hand, trying to um scope it and make it better. So there are times when like you break and you just have to go Valk and sack itself off. And like uh, another thing to have your board empty so that you can use your mirror, banish it, and then search another mirror, uh, search another Necro's ritual spells just so you can scope your hand. You do weird stuff like that, so it's always nice to have that Inception because um some of the Necros you need their effect. And you can only use them once per turn. So having that um, an, an additional ritual spell that can be used to ritual summon anything is really nice. Uh, for the extra deck that I hardly ever summon from, just normally just dump stuff, we've got three Herald of the Arclight and three Unts. Three Totally Awesomes that are proxies because I sold them. Uh, money's tied around here. Zulkin, this is supposed to be Star Eater. I don't have a level 11 target right now, but it should be Star Eater because I like him. He's a good level 11. He just looks cool. Majestic is my choice for level 10 target. And Trish. So I feel for Kaleido, you want to have um, between 9 and 10. Level 8 barely comes up, but 9, 10, uh, 9, 10, 11, and 12 always come up. And for the final last two cards in my extra deck are Nyarla. This is just too good to not play in any ritual deck that is abusing cards like Nts and Hail to the Arclight. You use this and loop them. Uh, but in this deck, it's really good because you can also re-attach uh, a Totally Awesome from your graveyard. And then you'll detach a Toad and reattach this. And then Toad gets any Necro's Ritual Monster or any water from your grave to your hand. Then next turn, you detach this. Get a search for any Ritual Spell or Ritual Monster. And then reattach Toad. And then detach Toad. And then reattach this. And whenever you want to pop a card, you detach the search. And then reattach this. And then come the next turn, you detach this to pop and reattach this. As long as you can protect this card, it's like a jack-of-all-trades resource center. It's like... YMCA and then we got as a thought because whenever you're done with the Niarla you summon the thought and kill them that's it for my necros profile I know it's different everybody plays necros different I hope that you guys enjoyed this profile I hope that you guys also got some cool little ideas to experiment with and uh, there's really no right or wrong play the deck no right or wrong way to play deck as long as you get uh, successful results with it so this could be a blueprint for you if you want to play necros and you haven't played them before um, I have done test hands. I can get some more, but that's just something that's just going to have to be put on the to-do list and also put on a wait list 
Well, thank you guys so much. God bless you. Make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. Stay tuned for future content and also stay positive, all right? Peace out, guys.